In today's video, I'm going to be showing you guys how to integrate the Git version control management system within your Flutter application and use GitHub to actually store your code on a remote repository and share your work with the world. So this tutorial is going to be divided into two parts. The first part is going to focus on all of the setup that we need to do on our local machine just to get Git up and running. And then we're also going to be taking a look after that on what we have to do to basically link our remote repository with the local repo that we have on our system. So with this set, let's get into the video. So the first thing that I want you to do is make sure that you have Git installed on your system. If you do not, then what you can do is head on over to a website and then links to all of the resources that I mentioned within this video are going to be down in the description below. But basically what you're going to be doing is coming to a website, Git dash scm.com forward slash downloads and here you can download the git version control management tool for your operating system so in the case of mac os just click on mac os and download like that in the case of windows it's going to be similar so once you've downloaded git and installed it on your system to confirm that you have git working properly what you can do is open up either terminal if you're on mac os um, or you can open up the partial application on windows and type in the command git dash dash help and if it gives you an output similar to what you're seeing here which is basically letting you know that hey these are all of the commands that are available to you on the git cli tool that means that git was installed correctly you can also do git dash dash version and this is going to let you know what the actual version of the git tool that's installed in your system is in my case it's 2.41.0 so once this is done, this is pretty much good to go. And now we have Git installed on our system. So we can move on over to how to work with Git within our own Flutter project. So to do that, what I've done is that I've created an empty Flutter project and I've opened that within Visual Studio Code. That's my code editor of choice. And once I've done that, what I'm going to be doing is opening up a new terminal window. Within this terminal window, I'm going to make sure that I'm within the root directory of my project. So if I do LS, I can see that all of the files listed correspond to the root directory of my project. So now I'm going to be initializing a GitHub repository within this directory. And what's going to happen is that it's going to track changes within this directory, as well as all child directories of this specific project. So to initialize a Git repo on our local system, what we're going to be doing is typing in Git in it. And what this is basically going to do is create a empty Git repository within this specific folder, which is within the actual GitHub demo app project folder that I have, and then a folder called forward slash dot git. So you won't be able to see that here because by default it's hidden, but trust me that the folder is here. So once you've done this, what you can do is actually type in git status. And this is basically going to show to me the state of my current working directory, as well as the staging area. It's going to let me know which changes have been staged, uh, which haven't, and what files are being tracked by Git and which files are not. So for now, we haven't made any commits. So this basically means that we haven't actually taken code and committed it to our Git repo. And at the same time, it's also letting me know that there are a bunch of untracked files that Git is not tracking within my actual project. So let's quickly fix this issue that the files that are not being tracked. So to do that, what I'm going to be doing is using a command called git add. And what this is basically going to do is let the git version control system know that, hey, you need to add the following files and keep a track of them. If you do dot, what's basically going to happen is that it's going to take into account all of the files that are within this directory as well as our parent directories and keep a track of them. At the same time, it's also going to take a look at the .gitignore file, which the Flutter create command automatically creates for us and make sure that all of the files that are mentioned here are not tracked by Git. So if I do git add dot, you can see that now what's basically going to happen is that it's going to take a look at all of the files and then determine which file it needs to track and which it doesn't need to track using the gitignore file and then start tracking them. So now if I do git status again, this time you're going to see that it's telling me all of the changes that have happened to my current working directory and what's the state of it. Um, and as you can see, it says that I have changes that need to be committed. So I've stashed these changes, but I haven't committed them yet. So how can I do that? Well, to do that, what I'm going to be doing is basically creating a git commit now. So to do that, I'll do git commit dash m. So dash M stands for adding a message to our commit. And here I'm just going to do initial commit. So you can add whatever actual commit message you want here and press enter. So as soon as I do that, you're going to see that it's going to tell me that, hey, 
it created a commit and it added all of these files to that commit. And now if I do get status, you are going to see that my status of my current working tree again is going to be clean since I had taken all of my state changes and committed them within my repo. So with this done, that's pretty much all you need to do in terms of what needs to happen on the local repository side of things. So the next thing that we need to do is now set up a remote repo on GitHub and then we can actually link that to our local repo. So to do that, what I'm going to be doing is coming to github.com and I am then going to come to the section which says your profile. And here what I'm going to be doing is basically coming to repositories and then I'm going to create a new repo. When I create a new repo, I'm going to give that repo a name and let me increase the size so that it's easier for you guys to see. The name here is just going to be demo flutter app like so it's going to tell me that it's available and then you can decide if this repo is public or private i'm just going to keep it private and then after this i'm not going to select anything else here for now and i'm going to click on create repo once this is done you are going to see that it's going to tell me that the repo has been created it's called double flutter app and i can now use either https or ssh to actually work with this repo so to work with it, we are going to be using the following commands. As you can see, the first command that we have to do is git init on our local machine. And as you already know, that git init is basically going to initialize a GitHub repo within your actual project. Then we are not going to add a readme file. We've already done the git add step. What we did was git add dot. So we added all of the files that we wanted git to track and the files that we wanted it to ignore, we placed them within the dot git ignore file. And I'll come to what the dot git ignore file is a bit more, but for now, let's just keep moving on. The next step is going to be to create a commit, which we have already done so as well. Uh, we don't have to take a look at the branch for now, just a tad bit more than what a beginner should be concerned with. So we're not going to be talking about that. But this is the thing that we have to do. We basically need to tell the local Git repo that we have that, hey, I want to add a remote repo, the name of which is going to be origin, and it's located at the following URL. So let's copy this command, and the command is going to be a little bit different for you but it's basically going to be the same and we'll paste that in within our terminal and press enter. And as soon as we do this, what's basically going to happen is what I had described, which is that we are going to tell the local Git repo that we have that I need to add a remote repo and it's going to be called origin. And this is the actual location of it. So once we've done this, that's pretty much all we had to do. So the next thing that we are now going to be doing is basically pushing the actual commits that we have made within our local repo and our local system to this remote repo, which we call origin. So to do that, it's showing you the command here. It says git push. So let's do that. So basically what we're going to be doing is git push dash u. And then after this, I'll type in origin, which is the name of my remote repo. And finally, the last thing that we have to do is basically tell the name of the branch where we want to publish our code to. So in this case, that is going to be main. And then if I press enter, you are going to see that it says that it cannot find a branch main on the following GitHub repo. So how can I fix this? So to fix this, what you can do is actually take a look at what branch you are on. So if I do git branch, you can see that my branch is called master. So then what I can do, um, and there are many fixes to this, is that I can, instead of doing git push dash u origin main, I can do origin master, press enter. And this is going to go ahead and push all of my changes from the master branch that I have on my local repository to the master branch that is going to exist on the remote repository, which we called origin, that's on GitHub. So now if I go back to GitHub and I reload the repos URL, you're going to see that all of my code now is being shown within GitHub and we can see everything here. So now the next thing that I wanna talk about, which is an important concept that you should understand, is what the .gitignore file is used for. So I had alluded to before that Git is a version control management system and Git basically keeps track of all of the changes that happens to files within your project. 
But if we want to have some files within our project that we do not want to get to keep track of and we want Git to ignore. Well, in that case, we use the file Git ignore. And we basically define here file names or descriptors for files that then Git basically uses to deduce that whether this file should be ignored or not. So let's just say that for some reason within my project, I have a file that stores some secrets. And usually it's a file that is called .env. And here I have some information that is pertinent for my application to work properly, but it is secret. It's some kind of an API key. It's some kind of a secret that I don't want to basically commit to a GitHub repo or a remote repo. So how can I basically tell Git to ignore this file? So firstly, let's just create something here. So I'm going to say super secret equals to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, like so, and do command save. Then if I come to the dot get ignore file, for now, if I do get status, you can see that it's telling me that a file is currently being untracked. But if I do git add dot currently and press enter, then what it's going to do is that it's going to start tracking this file as well. But I don't want that. What I want to basically do is make sure that this file isn't tracked. So for that, I can come to dot git ignore. And then here I can just say that dot env is the file that needs to be ignored and do command save. So as soon as I do this, you are going to see that now if I do git status, it's still telling me that the .git ignore file was modified, but now you can see that it's also letting me know that it's not tracking the .env file anymore because we can't see anything related to the .env file being shown when we do git status. So with this then, now we have told git that, hey, I want the .env file to be ignored and the changes within it to not be tracked. But we've updated our .git ignore file, so how do we now commit this change uh, within our local repo as well as to the remote origin repo that we have on GitHub. So to do that, it's going to be the same process. I'm going to do git commit dash m and then I'm going to basically for the message say that git ignore updated and press enter and it's letting me know that hey, um, you first need to add changes before you can commit them. So we need to stage these files first. So to do that, what I'm going to be doing is git add dot so basically stage all of the changes that I've currently made, active working directory. And once this is done, I'm again going to do git commit dash M and then the commit message. And this time it's going to say that there we go, we've created a commit. The hash for that is this, um, it's on the master branch. Uh, this is what the message for that is. And one file was changed and one insertion means how many lines were changed. So only one line was changed. And with this done, we have basically committed this change within our local repo. So now I want to push the changes and synchronize the local repo with the remote repo. So for that, I can do git push now. And by doing git push, as you can see, it basically went ahead and pushed these changes to the remote repo as well. So now on GitHub, I can just come back and reload it. And as you can see, it says that the .git ignore file was just updated one minute ago, and there are a total of two commits that have been made to this repo. And if I click on these, I can see that what the commits were. So that's pretty much it for today's tutorial. I just wanted to let you know that this is a very bare bones tutorial on how to get the Git version control system working with your Flutter project, as well as get your project linked with a remote Git repo such as GitHub. There are a lot of things that you need to learn and Git is a very complicated system, but the stuff that I've taught you in this video is going to be sufficient enough for you to get going with the Git version control management system and GitHub. There are a lot of other useful concepts that you should learn such as branches, pull requests and a whole bunch of other things like that but that's for another video so with that stay happy stay healthy keep learning keep going and i'll see you guys in the next video bye bye